is Meniere's disease genetic? I get asked this question multiple times per week, and the answer is sort of. So let me explain what I mean. Most of the time when people are asking, is Meniere's disease genetic? What they want to know is, is it inheritable? Meaning if I have it, am I going to pass it on to my kids? Or, you know, I have it, but no one else in my family has it. Well, here's the thing about Meniere's disease and genes. So to answer the first question about, is it heritable? Like meaning, you know, can you pass it down? Only about 5% of cases of Meniere's disease are what we call uh, genetic in that sense. So there's a very low chance if you have Meniere's disease that you're going to somehow pass that on uh, to other people in your family. Now, the bad news is if someone in your family had Meniere's disease or more than one person's had Meniere's disease uh, and you start having loss of hearing, some muffled sounds, you know, feeling like your ear is full, you started getting a little vertiginous, maybe some tinnitus, then the odds go up that you may in fact be developing the Meniere's disease process, which is called endolymphatic high drops. Sometimes people call it cochlear high drops. So if you're in that situation where someone in your family for sure had Meniere's disease, like your mom, dad, uh, first degree sibling, and you're starting to develop some of those symptoms I just mentioned, I would be proactive. I would start looking for someone that can start being proactive and in investigating your immune system right now. I wouldn't wait until you have your first attack. Now, the other side of the coin, are there genes involved in Meniere's disease? Sure. There are genes involved in cell adhesion. There's genes involved in energy maintenance. And basically what it boils down to is with any type of disease process, there's going to be genes that are involved in it. But they're not genes that you like pass down to other people if they're somehow faulty or mutated. In Meniere's disease, uh, what the research is really showing, if you read it, is that there seems to be what I'm going to call a leaky ear, okay? Meaning there's an abnormal permeability in a couple different parts of the vestibular system in the cochlea, uh, in the organ of corti, and in this place called the uh, stria vascularis. Now, I'm going to make another video just about the leaky ear. Now, you may have heard of like, you know, leaky gut. Well, this is very similar. There's a barrier system in there, and if it's leaky, it can lead to problems that look just like Meniere's disease. And that's also why uh, I look at Meniere's disease really strongly from an, an immune system standpoint. So we're not going to get onto that, but I just want to answer the question today, is Meniere's disease genetic? Can I pass it on to my kids? The answer is 95% probably not. That's not going to happen, but uh, it can happen. So just remember that, yeah, genes are involved. You're probably not going to pass it on to your kids, but if you are still having Meniere's disease symptoms, meaning you're not stable, like you're still having a fluctuating hearing loss or progressive hearing loss, it's getting worse, you're still having a vertigo attacks from time to time, if your balance is still terrible, that tells me that your Meniere's disease is not stable and you have a fragile ear, and I'm going to call it uh, a leaky ear most likely. So make sure you're working with someone I would recommend that understands that terminology I just gave you and understands that you know, diuretics, beta histine, low sodium diet, those are fine, but they may not work because you need to take, in my opinion, a more kind of comprehensive approach. And the vast majority of people that make it to me with Meniere's disease, that's not stable. The vast majority of those people that get better and stay better, it's something going on with their immune disease, uh, their immune system. But, you know, it may not be the same thing from person to person. I got a lot of other videos on that. So that's it for today. I hope that helps answer the question about, you know, is, is Meniere's disease genetic? So I'll see you guys next time.